Welcome to Trico. I'm Falguni Whedon, welcoming you to Trico's 15th edition. Welcome to Trico. I'm Falguni Whedon and it's our 15th edition. I'm delighted here today to be sitting with Dr. Golati. Welcome. If you can just introduce yourself briefly for us. Sure. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Rajiv Golati. I am a, a professor of cardiology, professor of medicine at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm an international cardiologist and I've uh, been here several times. I'm delighted to be back. We won't keep you too long from these really exciting live courses taking place downstairs. Any thoughts on what you've seen so far? It's been a great day. Uh, one thing I will say at the outset is that I've noticed that over the years how this has evolved into a really top class uh, conference mm. uh, covering uh, you know, from beginners to experts and beyond and, and I think today is, a, is an example of that. This morning we've had some great live cases, rapid turnover between cases to cram in as much information as mm. possible and it's been, been a real pleasure to be part of it. And any messages for the young cardiologists coming through the ranks watching today either online or perhaps downstairs in the live auditorium? Yeah, I think so. Interventional cardiology has evolved uh, a lot over the last few years. We have more uh, tools, we have more techniques at our disposal. And I think uh, cramming in as much of that into their knowledge banks as possible is the first thing I would do. Tips and tricks, how to get out of trouble. Uh, I think one thing that uh, Tejas does particularly well is that he, he keeps on reinforcing the importance of looking at the whole picture, mm -hmm. looking at the whole patient, Use integrating all of the knowledge from the procedure to make the correct decisions. And I think that filters through the whole conference and it's much appreciated. And that's the one thing I would take away as a new person. Mm. So we've seen OCT being used this morning. Apex Heart Institute is the center of excellence for South Asia. Um, what are your thoughts on the technology? Now, OCT has been around for a while, but I think it, particularly the last two or three years, it's really taken off as a technology. I think there's a, a growing appreciation of the value that it adds to a patient's procedure, safety, uh, modification for longer term benefit. There are several randomized trials that have been done. One big one that's underway that will really tell us if it's going to add value as a routine imaging modality. Um, you know, we, uh, Tejas has invited Dr. Akasaka here, who is an international authority in OCT, and you could see how that comes through with his discussion and, 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 he, and with his papers that he's published. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it, it's, it, it's a phenomenal technology. Um, it, as I say, it's been around for a while, but now with increasing utilization experience, I think people are finally seeing the value of it. Mm. And talking about phenomenal technology, robotics, yeah. we've seen Apex Heart Institute perform the first five cases of telerobotics. What are your thoughts on this new technology and do you really think it is the catalyst to take us forward into the future? That's a, that's a great question and uh, I, I, I'm an optimist and I think yes, I do think there is a, a big future in robotics. Uh, we've heard a lecture this morning from my colleague Malcolm Bell about the occupational hazards of wearing leads and you know, I think we're all getting now in tune with that as a risk to ourselves over a long career. So that may be one driving force into robotics. Mm -hmm. But there is clearly a bigger um, potential for robotics. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, uh, you know, remote is one incredible example. Mm -hmm. Offering PCI to underserved and rural populations mm -hmm. would be a huge win. Uh, but also the ability to do more complex procedures in a more reliable manner, predictive manner, with artificial intelligence, uh, with with other parts, not just cardiac stuff, but cerebral stroke intervention, I think there potentially is a future. The question is, will the business plan for this in, in a big picture be, be a workable proposition? Mm -hmm. We'll see. Okay. And Professor, just before we let you get back to the live cases, anything on your wish list for Trico in coming years? Structural. Structural cardiology. I think clearly that's taking off. Uh, it's a wonderful time to be an interventional cardiologist. Uh, we have some bright minds and some innovative people and I think in structural cardiology has a real future so I'd like to see that in future years. Professor Galati, thank you so much for joining us for our 15th edition of Trico. It's been a pleasure, thank you. Thank you.